Top Bird Talk. Monty Mython here. As we prepare to move into the next phase of the COVID crisis, we're going to be widening our focus here on Top Bird Talk. We will continue to deliver COVID-specific programmes, but we all have a huge additional responsibility as we try to reboot normal services. So although this piece is not directly related to COVID-19, we believe it's information that is crucial to the bigger task of rebuilding the healthcare system as we learn to adapt and live with this new virus. Thank you to our sponsors and to you, our listeners, for helping us to share this important information. And to introduce the next speaker, it's Dr. Graciela martinez Pari from Barcelona, and she's a consultant anesthesiologist at the hospital clinic in Barcelona, but she's a lot more than that. She introduced prehabilitation in Barcelona from 2013. She has worked on programs for patients with major abdominal surgeries, and she expanded the program to many other uh, surgeries at this moment. So, por favor, Graciela, please come to the stage. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan, for the introduction, and I would like to thank to the organization committee for inviting me to give this lecture and to have the opportunity to share with all the prehab community our experience in Barcelona. So, uh, to start, if I'm going back in time, we can identify several dates or facts that point out the beginning of our uh, of the implement of the phases of our implementation uh, plan. So in 2013, we started our first randomized control trial, and uh, three years later, uh, we there to open uh, our modest prehab unit. Uh, one uh, year later, we had a very lucky strike. And we got a donation from technology company, so we had a really, uh, a really gym to offer our patients uh, a high intensity uh, training. And uh, the next step for us was uh, to scale uh, our program to all those patients, even those who live away from their hospital and cannot go uh, really often to the hospital. And then we decided uh, to develop an, an, an app for uh, encourage the patients uh, to follow uh, the, the plan. So uh, we, we were lucky, and the last week we had the first version of our uh, prehab hub. So more in detail, uh, as I said, in 2013, we started our first randomized control trial uh, in the setting of major abdominal surgery. Uh, we intentionally select high-risk surgical patients because we thought that they are the most vulnerable for complications. And the uh, primary endpoint of our uh, study was the reduction of uh, postoperative complications. We, we also wanted to evaluate the impact of the program up to uh, six months after surgery. It's important to highlight that uh, in this study, we only, um, well, the, the, the PREHAP program was based essentially in promotion of activity, of physical activity and high intensity endurance uh, training. We, we do not have, we did not have a nutritional uh, support or emotional support. And this is our main results that have been recently uh, published. First, we have demonstrated how prehab program is effective in, redu in reducing uh, postoperative complications, reducing the ICU stay and readmissions of 30 days. Second, we have demonstrated that in this sitting, in our hospital and with this kind of patients, the prehab is sufficient, generates a health values uh, without increasing cost. Of course, uh, prehab at a cost to healthcare. However, it seems to be compensated, but the reduction of complications, the readmissions and visits uh, to the emergency room after discharge from the hospital. And third, and I think it's also very interesting, the, the benefits from a uh, prehab program are sustainable uh, at least up to six months after surgery. I mean, 
at three and six months, uh, patients in the prehab group uh, still uh, have a higher uh, aerobic capacity and higher levels of physical activity. So, uh, given, the, given these uh, good results, uh, we decided to transfer our experience and knowledge uh, from the experimental setting to the clinical setting, and we open our low-cost prehab unit. It's a very modest prehab unit. And uh, following or taking into account uh, the previous experience from Professor Carly, we decided to include in our program, besides the physical activity plan, also a nutritional supplementation and uh, emotional uh, support. It, it was a, a, a essentially home-based uh, plan, so we organized uh, uh, weekly group sessions of functional exercise. Uh, we encourage the patient to walk and increase the daily steps per day. And uh, we organize several sessions for nutritional counseling and also mindfulness practice. Here you can see our facilities. We did not have and do not have a specific place for the unit. We took and still take advantage from the outpatient's clinic in the morning. So we work during the afternoon in all this area. You can see here uh, how we do the evaluations, the group sessions, uh, and so on. And, and as I said before, we had a lucky strike in 2017. Um, we have a friend, friend of Rafa Nadal, the tennis player, and he support us and help us with Technogen Company, who finally donate us all the fantastic equipment that we have now. And we are now are able to train six to eight patients at the same time. So uh, from then, uh, we have been reorganizing our workflow, our designing the, 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 the prehab unit, and uh, that's what I am explaining now in a very practice way, what we, are, what we do currently in the unit. Uh, we consider it candidates for prehab uh, program. Those patients scheduled for this surgery, we always work in an nearest context. Although uh, we, we know that prehab is really useful uh, for all patients, we uh, selected high-risk patients because our capacity is limited. And uh, we include patients uh, over 70 years and our ASA uh, class 3 and 4, or those poor fit patients for a very aggressive surgery regardless the age or ASA class. And of course, we need at least uh, four weeks ahead for the surgery to complete uh, the, the program, although uh, we uh, very often uh, do some exceptions for that. Uh, we have calculated that in our center, we have uh, like uh, 1,000 uh, potential candidates for this program, although of course, we, we are not able to, to attend uh, all of them. Uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, work uh, is based in three key elements. First, we do a holistic evaluation of the patients, including not only the, the comorbidities. We also evaluate the functional condition, the nutritional status, the psychological state of the patients, and the lifestyle, including the physical activity level, the habits, the logistics, and um, adherence profile. Second, with all these informations, we design a personal plan uh, for each uh, patient, for these patients in particular, uh, taking into account the needs and the logistics that the patients need. And uh, third, and no less important, uh, we need to empower the patients. Uh, we need that the patients uh, participate very actively in the, in the program. It's, it's crucial, of course. So the patients need to be very well informed. We need to set the goals with the patients together with him or her. Uh, we need to rise uh, a compromise of change behavior. Uh, we need to do some recommendations to encourage, motivate the patients uh, because, of course, if the patients don't, uh, doesn't work uh, with us, we, we, we can do anything. Um, although, uh, although 
our gym is open uh, all the week from Monday to Friday. Uh, the the um, uh, prehab unit where we uh, where we evaluate and follow up the patient it's only open on Monday, so Monday is our hectic day. We are really busy on Monday afternoon. Uh, we attend like uh, five to seven new patients every Monday. And uh, we have in, in the program uh, like 20, 20 uh, patients constantly. Uh, once the surgeon has indicated the surgery, he or her refers uh, the patient to the anesthesiologist uh, to the conventional preoperative evaluation. And if the patient meets um, the, um, the criteria for, for uh, uh, the the pre program, it's referred to the unit. Although uh, more and more often, it's uh, is the, the surgeon uh, who refers directly uh, the patients to the prehab unit. Cancer patients are uh, our priority, and uh, they are uh, visited in our uh, unit within a week from the uh, indication of surgery. Uh, the, the anesthesiologist introduce all the team in the program and with the help of uh, nurse anesthetic uh, do all the evaluation with those uh, functional tests inform the patients, motivate the patients to follow the, the program, and uh, with the feedback all of, of the whole team, uh, finally defi- design uh, the general plan. Uh, all our patients are individually interviewed by the kinesiologist, by the physiotherapist, uh, and based on the functional status, the physical activity level, uh, logistic and other ends profile, uh, design a home-based physical activity plan. Uh, all our patients are given a pedometer unless they have an, an app to track the, the, the activity. Uh, and a small group of patients, very selected patients, uh, are attending to an uh, inspiratory muscle training session with this device that Dr. Levitt uh, explained us yesterday. And uh, most of the, the other ones uh, are attending to uh, also group sessions on Monday for breathing uh, exercise with a, a volumetric uh, incentive spirometer. And those high-risk patients, multimorbid and uh, low-fit patients uh, are encouraged to attend to our uh, high-intensity endurance training program. Uh, and they attend uh, to two to three uh, group sessions uh, per week. Uh, the nutritional intervention um, uh, is organized depending on the mass nutritional profile and uh, if the patient uh, or has or not uh, digestive symptoms in three levels of intervention. Low-risk patients attend to a group uh, session on Mondays. Uh, is a counseling uh, session uh, to ensure an adequate protein intake by, di- by diet. Uh, Medium risk patients have an individual uh, visit with the nutritionist uh, just to ensure also the, the protein uh, intake and sometimes uh, the, nutrition, uh, the nutritionist uh, give, uh, gives uh, protein supplementation and high risk patients uh, who need a specific and tailored supplementation uh, have an, also an individual uh, visit with the nutritionist and uh, a more close uh, a follow-up. And uh, all our patients, uh, we, we offer to all our patients uh, uh, mindfulness sessions, and we strongly recommend for those patients with a hospital anxiety and depression questionnaire over eight. Um, the patient and his or her partner or main her caregiver are invited to, invited to the sessions. And we have uh, a short session every every Monday for beginners, and then one hour sessions for all the group, also every every Monday. And uh, we give to the patient some material, and, and we teach how to use some videos or so for for practicing mindfulness at home. Once the plan uh, has been designed. 
uh, the anesthesiologist report all the plan in the hospital information system. This is a very important part because uh, we think that uh, all the uh, doctors that uh, will attend the patient during the surgical process need to know that the patient is, is in this kind of program. This report is also available for the primary care physician, so it's that important. And uh, all the patients are given this little book uh, where uh, they uh, write down uh, the, the physical activity they do. Uh, they have some, I'm sorry about this, it's in Spain, but you can imagine or guess. Uh, we, we have some um, uh, recommendation, information, and, and they also can wrote, write down the, the mindfulness uh, practice. And uh, for the professional, we use a red cap. Uh, flat blood, I red cap platform that is really, really useful, not only as a data repository for a posterior analysis, but also uh, for track uh, the visits and the progress of the patients. So we have here the questionnaires and so, and uh, we work all together with this platform that uh, is online platform so we can use simultaneously uh, when we visit uh, the, the patients. And this is a kind of uh, summary of what we do. As you can see, uh, the first day we, the whole team, evaluate the patients and we follow the patients uh, every week. We reassess the patients. We repeat all the tests that we do uh, at, at the beginning of the of the program, uh, and we do that uh, on the fourth week or when we know that the the surgery uh, is closed. Uh, from the beginning in April uh, 2016, uh, we have attended almost uh, 400 patients all, uh, f from all of those uh, uh, surgical specialty. And as you can see here, uh, we, we can see that we are able to increase the six minutes walking test. But uh, now our uh, aim is to, we are uh, gathering a control group. Uh, that is uh, built uh, from the contemporary uh, patients who were uh, operated in our center, but uh, who were not included in the program for uh, because of logistic uh, reasons, and uh, we are using a two-step purpose propensity score matching approach uh, to design this control group, uh, taking into account uh, important variables such as ASA score, sex, uh, age, and also type of surgery. So we expect uh, maybe next year uh, have all their results uh, because we are trying to demonstrate that this kind of approach is also efficient in the real life setting. The main challenge uh, we faced during all this deployment uh, were, were uh, of course, money. Uh, you need resources for your staff, uh, for equipment. I'm really, really lucky. I have uh, very good friends, as I said, and also a very, very uh, compromised, devout, and wonderful uh, team. They are most of them over there. Uh, m many of them volunteers, like in the Ka Professor Carly group. Uh, we have some problems uh, with the transportation and logistic for the patients because you need that the patients come to the hospital every time and sometimes you need some special transportation, the patients need uh, a caregiver and so on. And the other issue is time, sometimes too short because uh, you are waiting for a cancer surgery, sometimes too long because you are waiting for a transplant or for a cardiac surgery and then uh, you have more time and uh, the capacity of our gym is limited so sometimes it's difficult to, to make the, the agendas. And, and sometimes it's also difficult for the patients because the patient is working or, or they take care of the other family or child or, or whatever. So we, we have been working uh, really hard. We have uh, even using a design thinking methodology 
to uh, help us to redefine uh, the, 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 the union. We have been working with patients, with experienced patients uh, for designing the unit, and we finally decided that uh, maybe an app would be a, a, a really useful for self-management of the plan and uh, for, for track the activity and so. And here it is. Uh, this is the mockups of our uh, of our app uh, that uh, is working this this um, this week. We are planning to test with patients just next week. Uh, this is a very simple uh, a very simple um, version because it's a thought for uh, elderly patients and so. Uh, we have some cards uh, about physical activity and nutrition and mindfulness information and um, the uh, app is connected with a uh, wearable with a rice uh, band uh, that it's a pedometer. It's important not only uh, to track the the progress of the patients, uh, it's also important for the patients to encourage to, to, to accomplish the, the, the objectives. And we also can send some information for specific patients and send some simple questionnaires just to check that the patient is following our recommendations. So briefly, uh, we have demonstrated the efficacy, the effectiveness in, uh, in the lab, in an experimental uh, setting. And now we are here. We are trying to implement, to scale up uh, the program to all our territory and to demonstrate the sustainability of the program. We are working, uh, granted by a project, uh, um, it, EIT health uh, project, and uh, well, maybe in uh, several months we can have some some many results. So to finish, and as a take-home message, I would like to say that prehab program should be available for all patients, candidates for major surgery, that they have been shown efficacy, efficiency, and sustainability, and uh, for the beginners. It's like an advice. It's uh, crucial to define a work plan specific for your institution, to come out uh, with a multidisciplinary team, and to define strategies, strategies uh, to large scale implementation using uh, the technology. So uh, that's all. Thank you very, very much for listening to me. Nick Majerison here. Thanks for downloading Top Med Talk. Top Med Talk is the broadcasting arm of EBPOM, evidence-based perioperative medicine. EBPOM has been advocating perioperative medicine for many years now, using the traditional conference circuit, where people have attended meetings from all over the world and heard some of the latest information. However, in the face of the COVID crisis, EBPOM took a bold decision. We've transposed the entire conferencing experience into an online experience carbon-friendly conferencing. The latest information, the latest talks, the hottest experts, the most incisive analysis, and even the socialising. We've got it all covered as EBPOM goes virtual. Hot on the heels of the huge success of EBPOM 2020 live from London, we're now headed towards EBPOM Chicago. Come aboard and be part of one of the most exciting developments in medicine since the stethoscope. EBPOM Chicago. Get yourself to EBPOM.org now and guarantee yourself a place at one of the most exciting conferences in the world.